friends and welcome back to my channel. A couple weeks ago, probably like a month or two ago I think, I did a video about my experience healing my cheek piercings. Um, and this was not like a cheek piercings 101, it was just kind of me talking about what my journey with my cheeks is like. And one of the things that I mentioned in that video was the social repercussions I experienced from having cheek piercings. Um, experiences like being denied entry to bars, um, being denied entry to restaurants, people telling me that like, my cheeks were the thing that made me too modified, um, and especially like friends and partners just really disliking the cheek piercings and being really unsupportive of them. And the reason why I wanted to talk about that in that video is because none of my other piercings and really none of my other modifications have ever gotten such a visceral response as my cheek piercings did. And you know, I want to be really honest and really truthful with y'all, and despite that I am a piercer and I love piercings, um, it's not always, you know, sunshine and rainbows. And a lot of people in the comments were shocked to hear about some of those social repercussions from any piercing, but especially a cheek piercing. Um, and there were also some folks in the comments who had cheeks who said they had the same experience, which was honestly really validating for me that it's not just me who's dealt with this. Uh, but I decided to pop on and talk a little bit more about the social repercussions of some piercings and just kind of my experience as a more pierced, more modified person. There's this saying in the industry, you buy the ticket, you ride the ride. And basically it means that when we decide to modify ourselves and we decide to get visibly tattooed and visibly pierced and stretch our ears, like we are agreeing to buy the ticket and ride the ride no matter where it takes us. And Sometimes where that ride takes us might be, you know, all the enjoyable experiences we get from body piercing and body modification, feeling at home in our own skin, all of that good stuff. But some of where the ride takes us is not so great. And social repercussions are a huge factor. Um, most folks will probably not be surprised to hear me say that like being super modified can make it really hard for you to find work. I think a lot of us are familiar with certain workplaces having dress codes that are no visible piercings or only one facial piercing or no big jewelry. We are already pretty familiar with, with that and most folks who want to be more pierced, who want to be more modified, are going into careers where they know they can do that. Willing to be the person who tries to make those changes and set new standards and just be such a damn good worker that they can't say no to hiring them with all their modifications. But most of us are already familiar with that realm of social repercussions, so I kind of want to talk a little bit honestly about some of the stuff that I think people don't talk about as much. Uh, as many of you know, I recently relocated to Seattle where we're here in our beautiful new, fairly empty Seattle studio, uh, but it's coming together. And one of the things that stood out to me so much in moving to Seattle was how easy the process of finding an apartment and getting housing was. Not easy in the sense of there's all this housing and it's super abundant and super affordable. It's fucking Seattle. Um, but easy in the sense of I never felt discriminated against or judged because of my modifications when I was apartment hunting here. I must have gone on and scheduled probably like a dozen tours of different apartments, different places. I was in touch with different rental agencies and no one cared. No one cared that I have yellow hair and big stretched ears and a bunch of piercings. And that, that has not been my experience in other places of the country by a long shot. Uh, I remember condo hunting when I lived in South Florida, gosh, probably this would have been like 2018, maybe 2019, and I actually had a realtor who was helping me find a place to live. Um, they were one of my clients, we were working together, and I kept sending them listings that I liked or letting them know like places I was interested in, and on more than one occasion, they sat me down and they were like, listen, like we can go tour this condo, um, but I'm going to tell you right now that they're, they're not going to rent to you because you have these tattoos and you have these piercings and you are modified. And obviously like I know that you're a good person and you're a decent person and you're probably going to be a good tenant, but these people, they're just not, they're just not going to want to rent to you. And they were right. They were super right. And I've had similar experiences. Uh, multiple other times trying to find places to rent. I had a similar experience trying to buy a car, um, just dealing with a lot of 
judgments and a lot of presumptions about who I am because I have tattoos and I have piercings. And it, it sucks. It's hard. Um, depending on what part of the country you're in, it can make things like trying to rent an apartment, trying to buy a car, super, super difficult. Um, another thing that it can make really hard is needing medical services and medical attention. I talked about this a little bit in the past, talking about like dealing with medical professionals and advocating for yourself, um, but a lot of modified people face a lot of discrimination when we go to seek healthcare. With some frequency that if I go into the ER for like something not even pain related, um, for an infected wound on my leg, and doctors and nurses were immediately like, oh, you're, you're pain medication seeking, you're drug seeking, and I was like, that's literally not like what I'm here for. I'm actually like not really in that much pain at all. Um, this is just like definitely fucking infected if we could like clean it out and get me some antibiotics would be great. Um, but there's a lot, there's a lot of discrimination uh, about that. And I, I knew when I decided to get modified and get all these piercings and get all these tattoos, a lot of which I did pretty young, I knew that it was going to make things in my life harder. I wasn't stupid. I knew that it was going to make finding a job harder. Like I heard all the things people said and I heard that saying multiple times, you buy the ticket, you ride the ride. I really thought I was prepared for how this was going to impact my life. And now on the cusp of turning 30, I can say with confidence that I was not. Uh, I never considered like it making it super difficult for me to access healthcare and medical care services uh, and have these just really unpleasant experiences just trying to seek care and make sure that I'm healthy. Obviously when we're more modified, a lot of these bigger cultural institutions, they're not the most welcoming for us, right? We all know about workplaces, apartment hunting, hospitals. I've been discriminated and turned away from restaurants and bars because I look too modified. I've been like judged or treated poorly by customer service staff in certain clothing stores or you know certain retail businesses because they assume I'm just some like gross, tattooed, pierced ruffian coming into their place of work, right? A lot of people will assume that I like can't afford nice things that I'm looking at, even though it's like, do you have any idea how much tattoos cost? Like, do you have any idea how much all of this work on me costs? Like, I'm good. Um, but one of the really big social repercussions has been dating um, in interpersonal relationships. And a lot of people really do not like modifications a lot of people don't understand them. But someone you get along with, you really enjoy their personality, you really enjoy your relationship with them. A lot of times they just don't like understand the drive to be modified, to be tattooed, to be pierced, what it really means to you. And fuck, I feel like I could do an entire video just talking about like my experiences, like dating and in relationships as a very modified person, having dated also very modified people and also completely unmodified people and just what a, a strain that could sometimes be on the relationship. Um, but I have a lot of people who will, especially like unsolicited strangers or people who I've just met like at an event or while I'm out who feel really comfortable telling me that they think that I'm super attractive and super pretty if only I didn't do that to my ears, if only I didn't have so many piercings. And that they would totally date me or totally sleep with me if it wasn't for my big stretched ears or if it wasn't for my cheek piercings. And first of all, it's like, why do you think, A, that I care, B, that you're entitled to give me your opinion about my dateability or my fuckability, uh, and C, that it's appropriate to say this to someone that you've just met. Um, but, but being very visibly modified it invites people to just come talk to you about anything and everything in usually really awkward conversations and situations. And again, I knew what I was signing up for, getting all of this work done, but boy, I was not as prepared as I thought.
It's just, it's a, it's a very persistent thing. And sometimes it's fine. Sometimes it's nice. People will come up to me on the street and they'll say, oh my gosh, like your tattoo is super beautiful. I love that. People will see me and they're like, oh, like your weights are really cool. Like what are those? Are they heavy? I've had some amazing, wonderful, just random interactions with strangers thanks to my modifications. And those interactions I cherish and they make me super happy. Uh, and if you, you know, see me bopping around, um, you know, please come say hi, I love that. But for every single one of those, like, beautiful, nice interactions, there's also like a, hey, yo, little mama, nice tats, cat call, or someone telling me, I bet your parents are so disappointed that you have all that stuff in your face. And just, just total and complete strangers feeling very comfortable telling me their most intimate opinions about my body and what I am doing with it and how they feel about it. And it just doesn't stop, you know? Some days I have all of the patience in the world for it and I totally want to talk to you about that tattoo idea that you have while I'm at the bar. And I totally am fine engaging with people and answering questions about my modifications and educating people, but sometimes I'm in a gross t-shirt covered in paint and I'm in the middle of working on stuff in my apartment and I need to run to the grocery store and I'm just trying to check out at the grocery store and buy the shit that I need and I don't need, you know, a, a cashier and two random customers like telling me their opinions about my tattoos, especially their negative ones. And it's like, it's not like you can turn it off. I mean like, I can wear long sleeves and full pants and like put my hair up under a hood or under a hat, wear masks, you can't see most of my facial piercings, but I don't wanna do that all the time. And even still, there I have modifications that you could tell that I have without all that, when I'm gonna wear gloves and like a full face covering. I'm gonna get just as many stares and looks in public as I would with all my tattoos on display. And you know, it's hard sometimes. It is hard sometimes. And I think as an industry, we we clung to that saying you buy the ticket you ride the ride really heavily and we and you know for good reason like we we were able to choose to do this we were able to choose to modify our bodies in this way a lot of people deal with very similar harassment and discrimination over things they have no choice about at all so at the end of the day like i did choose this but i think sometimes we've clung to that a little too strong and we haven't really created a space where people can just talk and vent about their experiences with this sort of thing. And that's a shame because it really does take a toll on you. And there are some times where I get dressed to go outside and I feel super beautiful and super confident and I love my outfit and I love how I look. And I look in the mirror and I think to myself, man, if you wear this out, like everyone's gonna comment on your tattoos. If you wear these weights out, like you're gonna get a lot of interactions. And I get changed. I put on simpler earrings. I decide to wear a full length pair of pants and a simpler t-shirt because I just, I don't have the patience that day and the bandwidth to deal with all of those comments and a lot of people's negative judgments on my body. And it, it hurts. I, I try really hard to be this like light of positivity and have all of my self-worth and my self-confidence and my self-love come from within and just really be 100% secure in myself and not let other people's words or thoughts or opinions get to me. But it's not always successful. And every now and again, those little comments slip through my armor. And, you know, whatever, hate comments online really don't bother me. But there's something about someone having the audacity to say it to you in person with their whole fucking chest that... It just sucks sometimes. And I don't want this video to dissuade people from getting the modifications that they want. Uh, and not for a single second do I have any regret about you know any of the work that I've done to my body. I love all of my modifications. I can't wait to get more. I love all of my piercings. I love my big wild ear weights and all of this stuff. But I would be lying if I just pretended that it was always great and I always felt beautiful and that these things didn't happen. And I kind of wish more people had talked about this in a compassionate way when I was younger and getting into the industry as opposed to just 
pretending like it shouldn't bother you and throwing that phrase at everyone who brought it up because I think it would have helped me prepare a lot more for what living an adult life as a very visibly modified person would be like and some of the unique challenges that I would face. So I hope that in making that video, I can do that for y'all and give you some added perspective about what it is like to exist as a modified person, some things that you might not have thought about when it comes to being visibly modified and how it can affect different areas of your life, and just a, a little moment of vulnerability because sometimes it's hard. Um, and I think I've spent a lot of time sharing uh, what it's like when it's easy on TikTok and even here on YouTube, but that's not the whole picture. I always want to be honest with all of you and show you the good and the bad. So that's just like, I don't know, a little venti discussion about the social repercussions of being really modified, and I hope it brings you some added perspective. Thanks for giving me some space to hang out and vent a little bit uh, and just kind of show the other side of things when it comes to this. Hopefully, as things grow forward and people become more accepting, we can just let other people exist the way they want to exist because all of my work really does make me so happy and the only negative things about it are other people's opinions and the way they treat me, not the process of getting or having the work. That makes me feel beautiful and incredible and whole. Thanks for giving me some space to share that and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.